Hello, in this session of LTE drive test, we will be discussing about various LTE drive test parameters. So whenever we are drive testing from one path to another, so we require to find out various parameters in this radio part. So what are the parameters which are required for LTE? We have number of parameters which will decide my network performance network performance and throughput values. That means to analyze or to have a check on network performance and its throughput parameters. So we require to deal with number of parameters for of LT. So in LT, the various parameters which will decide my network good network performance are RSRP, then we have RSRQ, RSSI, SINR, we have CQI, then we have PCI, BLER, Dowling throughput, and uplink throughput. So whenever we are driving from one area to another, so these are the parameters that we require to continuously analyze in the whole area. So RSRP is reference signal received power this is reference signal received quality. This is reference signal reference symbol signal intensity. SINR is signal to interference noise ratio. CQI is channel quality index. PCI is physical cell identity. This is block error ratio. So these are the parameters that we require to monitor for the LT drive test. And these parameters are specifically for LTE that means long term evolution. So now we will discuss one parameter after other. So what is there and what are the values that should be in between. That means the key performance indicators of various parameters we will discuss in our class. So let's start with very first that means RSRP which is reference signal received power. So reference signal received power, this parameter will show me the signal strength. That means if I want to have a particular signal strength of a cell, so I need to monitor RSRP power. That means if this is an LTE cell, so it is radiating a power. Cell is radiating power with its reference signal as reference signals are there for power calculations and not channels. That means this cell is radiating its reference signal and through reference signal we are getting broadcast channel. That means we are getting the coverage area because of reference signal. Sim signal. Now this reference signal I require to have its strength. That means 
how strong this reference signal is. Now if I am near to the cell, I will get a good value. And as I start moving away from the cell, my value goes on decreasing. So at exactly at the cell edges, if this is the cell edge, I have very less value of very less value of RSRP. That means at this particular area, the strength of the reference signal which I am receiving, that means the coverage area or the power strength is very less. So I'm not able to communicate with this cell and I require a handover. That means strength of the reference signal we are receiving is not that much strong to latch on this cell. So I will demand for a handover. And if any case I am not getting RSRP value or RSRP, this means that I am not getting LT coverage. That means this parameters, RF, R, RSRP parameters will tell us the absolute or strength of the signal. And this RSRP parameter is used in both idle and connected modes. If the user is sitting idle at this point, it should have an RSRP value and when it starts moving, its RSRP value should be there so that it can match. And if RSRP value or parameter is not, then no coverage. So it should be in proper range. If we are not getting proper RSRP values near to the site, so we require to optimize the network that why we are not getting RSRP values. So RSRP value, okay, parameter which will decide the strength of the signal and this is basically both working in both idle and connected mode. So basically RSRP is, the formula to calculate is RSSI minus 10 log of n multiply by now this n multiply by 12 so this is a formula for rsrp calculations now after calculations of we have a kpi that this rsrp should be from minus 44 to minus 140 dvm and if we are getting values less than this, so I require to optimize the network. So this is the KPI key performance indicator that my RSRP value should range in between this. So whenever we are drive testing, we have a continuous log files that is showing me values. So whenever I have value, if not ranges with this, in this, so I need to have a snapshot of this particular area. That means at this particular area, RSRP value is not good. So optimizer will go and optimize this area. Now, we have various parameters in this formula calculation. And now this one is RSSI. RSSI is also one of the parameter which is required to be measured. Then we have N and 12. So first I will tell you what is N parameter in this. So N is number of resource block, number of resource blocks of which we require, we are calculating RSRP. So if I have four RBs, I require to measure RSRP of these four RBs. Where n is the number of resource block and 12 are the number of subcarriers. So I have 12 subcarriers in LT. That's why I have multiplying it with 12 because I have 12 subcarriers and n will decide the number of resource blocks. So this is a first parameter that means the very first which is RSRP and its value should be from minus 44 to minus 140 dBm and it will tell us the signal strength. Now next parameter is
is our q and reference and received quality now this parameter r s r q as the name defined that this is reference signal received quality so it will tell me the quality of the signal which i am receiving now quality of the signal so what be the quality and how can we measure the quality of the signal so r s r q parameter is total r s r p divided by R double S I, then is again divided by n. That means we want to measure the quality of the signal, and this is the power which I am. Using. I require to divide it with this parameter, intensity and number of resource blocks. So if I have a relation between my R S R P values more, I can have good quality. My RSR value is less. My quality will degrade. And is it indirect proportion? If I have less RSR, then my RSR quality will be more, more and less. That means RSR is a parameter which is degrading. If it is more. More R S R I is degrading R S R Q. So reference signal received quality is the define as or tell us the quality of the signal I am receiving. Now this R S S I R S S I is related to intracell power. This is related to intracell power. Including these are the major factors in this. That RSSI is basically intercell power and including interference and noise. So if I have less interference and noise, I will have good quality. In if I have more interference and noise, I have less quality. That's why. These both are in indirect relationship R S double I and R S R Q. So this will find me the quality of the signal which I am receiving, and including interference and noise also. Now value of this. Now its value range from. Minus of three to minus of nineteen point five dBm. This is the KPI of key performance values, and my quality should ranges in between this. Now, if more value, more value, I have more value. That means good quality and less value. Poor quality. In any of the areas, I am getting poor quality or less value of R S R Q. So we require to encircle and take the screenshot, and then optimizer will optimize that particular area and find out the problem that why we are getting this much value in that particular area. So, so we had discussed about R S R Q and R S R Q. first parameter is telling me the power and another is telling quality so these are the factors which are responsible for good network performance if we have good power and good quality my network performance will be very good so this is about two parameter now let's do the third parameter and this is sinr third parameter sinr which is signal to interference noise ratio it is 
एस अपॉन आई प्लस एन एस सिग्नल टू इंटरफेरेंस नॉइज रेशो दैट मीन सिग्नल टू इंटरफेरेंस नॉइज एंड इट इज अनर रेशो प्रपोर्शन नो वॉट इज एस आई एल एन दिस इज एवरेज रिसीव सिग्नल पावर i is average received interference and this meant as my average received noise that means if this is the signal part and in this signal part i am receiving how much interference and how much noise will define my si and not parameters or values now as my signal transmitting so when it start transmitting its strength is more and also at this particular point i have low interference observed as it starts moving it starts fading with distance because i have interference also and i have my signal also in area so my signal starts fading as it covering or as it covers a distance so that is quality of interference interference noise i am receiving and my signal start starts fading and it, it is receiving some level of interference in the signal now at this point what is the power of the signal and how much interference and noise i am getting so as i say an r value but as i start moving signal power will also become less interference become more the quality will obviously degrade i can give or we can give a specific value for this si and Art because it totally depends upon environmental conditions. It totally depends upon the terrain conditions, number of trees, number of interference, and noises we have in it. Work. Now let's move to the next parameter in of drive test, and which is R double S N. Now this is about signal intensity. I can say this is about wide band power and including noise. It is having source power also, and it is having interference power also. That means wide band power. So I am calculating the power of the whole areas. noise signal this is my signal and an intent so obviously i can have some power of this signal p1 i can have some power of this noise p2 and power of this interference so the total power that means the reference signal receive intensity is the summation of p1 p2 and p3 Power that I am receiving from noise source power and interference. Power. So it is a calculated. That's why I have written here wide band power. It is basically a wide band power. So if I calculate R double S I, so formula is twelve multiplied by n, and then we require to multiply with R S R. Twelve is again the number of subgrades. And as the number of resource box, and R S R P is the power signal. This is of signal. Like this, I have for interference also and noise also. So we we are calculating the power which I am receiving receiving from each and every noise and interference and including cell that will give me the signal intensity. If my interference and noise is dominating. The my signal, so resultant will be degradation of network. So this is 
RSSI parameter. Now next parameter which we are going to discuss is CQI. CQI as channel quality index. The channel quality index I have values from 1 to 15. That means for channel quality index I have 15 different values 1, 2, 3, so on up to 15. Channel quality index will tell me the quality of the channel for downlink. That means this is basically to tell us quality of channel for downlink. Downlink that is E or B is sending our channel to UE. So what is the quality of the channel which I am receiving? So it totally depends upon good, totally depends upon good radio conditions, good bandwidth and it is there in dedicated mode only. This is in dedicated mode only. Why we have in dedicated mode only? Because only in dedicated mode I have channels from network. If I am in idle mode, I can't receive any channel from the network. That's why channel quality index is measured in dedicated mode only. And it is totally depends upon the RF conditions or the radio conditions. So good CQI, if I am receiving more CQI or 15 CQI, that means my conditions are good and it starts decreasing. So quality of the channel which I am receiving tonality index, good value, more parameter or more value will show me good results and it starts decreasing as you move from 13, 15 to 1. So this is our CQI. Next parameter which we require to check during drive test is PCI. PCI is physical cell identity. In planning part, we have discussed that we require to allocate one particular PCI to each and every cell. So now this PCI is divided as PSS and C multiplied by SSS. Now, PSS is primary synchronization symbol and SSS is secondary synchronization symbol. Now, this PSS has value 0, 1, 2, only 3 values and SSS has values from 0 to 167. That means SSS has total number of 8, 168 numbers whereas this has total 3 numbers. So, what do Required to check out in PCI values, so we require to check out, check out that for two different cells, my PCI should not be same. For different cell, if my PCI is same, so my UE will become confused here to that. So it is required that in drug testing, we require to check out PCI on which we are latching, and at a time we require to latch on only one PCI. So this is a parameter, which is PCI. Next parameter which we want to check in our right test is BLER. Where BLER is block error rate. Block error rate is the total number of erroneous blocks upon total blocks transmitted. That means this block error ratio is basically to check out the number of errors or we are receiving the network. So if I have transmitted 100 blocks, Error correction and detection, for correction and detection. I am transmitting 100 blocks, but I have, I can say, 20 error blocks. So, 
20 multiply by 100. So this is in percentage. I can say the 20 percent. I have 20 percent of blocks if I'm transmitting. So 20 percent is not a good value, and my B L E R value should be less than 10 percent. More errors, bad performance. Less error, good performance. So we require to check out B L E R parameters, which I am giving. That means how many errors block I am getting if I am transmitting some number of blocks. So this is in percentage form, and block error ratio should always be less than 10 percent. Now, next parameters, though that parameters do not have any specific values, but we require to monitor that what is downlink throughput and what is the uplink throughput we are getting in a particular areas. So, that means we require to connect to the internet, we require to upload some files, and we require to calculate or have a number of uplink and downlink speed that I am receiving in an area. So these are parameters that we have discussed in our class today as RSRP, RSRQ, RSSI, SINR, CQ, PCI, Del ER, and downlink and average through that we require to monitor on a daily basis in performing LT drug test. And if there is error in each in any one of the parameters, so we require to optimize that. So this is all for today. We will continue in our next class. Thank you so much.